Are you disappointed with the state of modern video games? Are you tired of your current game rotation? Well, maybe you should start working on that shamefully large backlog. But that's not what I'm talking about right now. Are you and the boys looking for a new game to waste your lives away playing? Maybe you don't have any friends and are incredibly lonely and are looking for a cool community to join. Or maybe you're a vertically challenged male looking for representation in the games you play. Well, then look no further than Deep Rock Galactic. DRG is a simple game. You are a space dwarf employed by the mining company Deep Rock Galactic. Stop it now. The only mining company brave or stupid enough to mine on the dangerous mining world known as Hoxie's 4. In other words, you work for a morally bankrupt company that does not care about your life in the slightest and certainly doesn't comply with OSHA guidelines. Huh, I guess this game is more realistic than I thought. Your job is to, you guessed it, mine valuable ores and whatnot. We're rich. We're rich. We're rich. We're rich. All while trying not to be murdered by a swarm of grotesque, extremely aggressive alien insectoids. Okay, maybe you didn't guess that last part. To complete your tasks, you can choose from four different classes to craft your team of fun-sized miners. Wait. Pause. That could sound really bad if taken out of context. Whatever, still keeping that in though. <coughs> Anyways, you've got the gunner, driller, scout, and engineer. The gunner is the perfect class for those who enjoy, for lack of a better term, shooting shit. Get it done, team. Your starting weapon is a minigun, and you have a measly supply of a little over 2,000 rounds of ammunition. Gunner gameplay mostly consists of holding down left click as you slowly cruise along your zipline, as well as maybe some occasional explosive shenanigans, and some hanging out in your shield bubble. The driller, sometimes referred to as digger, mostly by out of touch old folks, we don't call them that anymore grandma, let's get you back to the nursing home, does pretty much what you'd expect him to, dig through the caves with his drill hands. These players will often spend most of their time on hoxies, digging pointless, confusing tunnels like a schizophrenic doomsday prepper, then subsequently die to the massive horde of bugs that follow them through their little mole tunnel. The driller excels at crowd control, with your starting weapon being a flamethrower. Remember, it's not a war crime if you aren't at war. And also, they're not human, so it's fine. Although, the Germans did use that exact same excuse in World War II, so, um, uh, yeah, anyways. You also have a satchel charge that excels at eliminating your teammates. No, no, Sam, so I'll show you what I thought. <laughs> Explosives, fire! The scout is a class that doesn't so much as scout as make this operation possible. He is by default my favorite class because he possesses the grappling hook. What can I say? I'm a sucker for movement. Scout players tend to be a bit cocky and die to fall damage quite a bit. No! But if they can do this, can you really blame them? You're also equipped with a flare gun, which is pretty important since it's dark as shit in the caverns of Hoxies, and uh, you kinda need to see. The scout's arsenal is a bit light, especially against swarms, but you have surprisingly good single target damage to kill the big ones. The last class is the engineer, which is essentially the engineer from TF2, but um, vertically compressed. You've gotta build turrets to help defend you and your team from the swarm. You also have the platform gun, which is useful for many things, like protecting Doretta from the flying rocks, and placing the platforms in just the way that doesn't leave quite enough space to climb onto them, so the scout dies from fall damage when they're trying to grapple to it. In terms of your personal arsenal, it's kind of light, since you're really supposed to focus on your turrets, but some of your weapons can definitely pack a punch. Speaking of weapons, if you don't like the default ones for your class, you can unlock two more primaries and secondaries. Oh yeah, and you can upgrade pretty much everything in your arsenal extensively, and each weapon has multiple different modifications that you can unlock called overclocks. More on those later. Now that you're familiar with all the classes, you're ready to get to work. First, select a mission and head off to the Abyss Bar for a drink. If you're a real man, you'll choose to blackout stout. Some call it drinking on the job, I call it having a good time. Just don't order a leaf lover special afterwards, as it's potentially a bannable offense. Now that you're sufficiently intoxicated, it's time for you to grab your keys. I mean, hop into the drop pod. Don't worry, you're not the one driving. Plus, there's no cops in space. Once you land deep below the surface, it's mining time. Now there's a shit ton of different missions to choose from, but I don't feel like going through them all, so I'll mention a couple of my favorites. There's Egg Hunt, which consists of collecting some alien eggs for a, uh, hopefully not nefarious reason. I mostly just like these missions because of the squelching sound it makes while mining the eggs. I also like the sound of mining Morkite, but these missions are annoying as shit, especially in this biome since it becomes practically invisible, and searching for the last bit almost always makes me want to rip my hair out. There's also Escort Duty, where you have to protect a drill dozer as it makes his way through the caves, and eventually cracks open a big rock. Just make sure to pick up Doretta after the dozer gets destroyed, and bring her back to the drop pod, because remember, no dwarf gets left behind, and Doretta is just as much of a dwarf as the rest of us are. Throughout Hoxies, other than the countless number of Tyranid lookalikes and, uh, other horrific abominations, there's also some friendly fauna. 
like cave angels, harvesters, and loot bugs. If the RNG gods are on your side, you might even find a coveted a golden, golden loot bug, bug which you can pet while it makes cute little squeaking sounds until you um, dispatch it, and it explodes with tons of shiny gold. Your honor, in my defense, he shouldn't have eaten precious minerals since it did, in fact, get him killed. You can also equip a perk that causes loot bugs to explode whenever you get close to them, which might help clear your conscience. Still doesn't make you any less of a monster, though. Anyways, if you're a hardcore gamer and the normal missions are too easy for you, don't worry. Once you get one of your dwarves to level 25, you'll have the opportunity to promote them. You'll have to complete an assignment and pay a small fee, because of course you have to, and your class rank will be set back to 1. But you'll earn a cool little star. You'll also unlock deep dives, which are three consecutive missions with no secondary objectives. Instead, you'll have two primary ones. Oh yeah, and you'll also have to do all that with a shared pool of resources. Still sounding too easy? Well, there's also elite deep, deep dives, dive which is everything I just described turned up to 11, with the final stage being hazard level 5.5. In case you didn't know, this is the highest difficulty available without using mods. And yeah, mods are fully supported through mod.io, which can result in some crazy shit like this. The Anyways, after completing stages and deep dives, you'll learn cores, which you can use at the forge terminal in the space rig to unlock the aforementioned OP as shit upgrades overclocks. Now, what cores you get are RNG based and considering how many weapons there are across all classes, and how many overclocks there are for each weapon, yeah, it might be a while before you get the exact one you're looking for, but hey, at least they're free. Okay, so uh, I have pretty abysmal luck when it comes to timing. Enjoy the scout gameplay in the background as I talk. As I was editing this video, on October 5th, Ghost Ship Games dropped a post on Steam. In this post, they announced their new game, Deep Rock Galactic Rogue Core, and the relevant part for this video is they outline that Season 5 won't release until June 2024. Now, I will say that DRG is a full polished experience as is, but I can't say that I'm not a bit disappointed. This section of the video was originally going to be me praising GSG for the amount of free updates they've added to the game, uh, which is kind of awkward now. My personal opinion is that I don't agree with leaving DRG dead in the water while they focus on the spin-off, especially since DRG has such a strong community, which is still growing to this day, by the way. I still recommend this game because I think it's that good, but this news definitely is something to keep in mind. Currently, the game is still thriving, but I am definitely worried for its future, and I couldn't in good conscience not include this update, or I guess lack thereof. Anyways, back to the rest of the video. The last thing I wanted to do is address the community of this game. As many of you may know, a game's community is usually the worst aspect of it. This could not be further from the truth when it comes to Deep Rock Galactic. If you see players dropping R's in the chat, this isn't an attempt to bypass chat restrictions and call you a gamer word you've never heard of, they're just making sure everybody's ready to start the objective. Some other examples of dwarf etiquette include spamming the marker on compressed gold, as well as golden loot bugs, make sure not to double dip the resupply pod without asking, and if someone salutes you, you better drop a rocket stone back, or else. In fact, you should probably remap the salute keybind to one of your mouse buttons. That way it's easier to spam it. New players, Bro mind one thing. or green beards as they're called in the business, are welcome. So don't be afraid to join a random server. Trust me, it's more fun than solo. Sorry Bosco. Although, there might be the occasional team kill. But it's all in good fun. Anyways, as always, 